journey effective, we need to carefully plan it in order to avoid some common mistakes like making exercises too long or too short. For example, if you give students 10 minutes to complete a simple exercise, some groups will finish earlier in 2 minutes and waste 8 minutes of valuable class time, and some others will struggle for the full 10 minutes, which is extremely frustrating and also a waste of class time. As highlighted in one of the pilots, a session of brainstorming must not be too short in order to allow students to go beyond the first ideas, neither can it be too long. It is impossible to keep the productive energy necessary for a brainstorming session for more than one hour. Sometimes it is useful to split a longer session into many segments in which different stimuli and techniques are used. Furthermore, in each activity it is very important to give the necessary time both for the actual exchange of ideas and for reflection. The environment has also its own importance. For example, the setting where a brainstorming session takes place must be specially prepared in order to allow people to walk and move. According to a study by two professors from Stanford University, Opezzo and Schwartz, walking helps divergent thinking and the production of creative ideas. The ideas can be posted along the walls, setting up special spaces like posters, flip charts, and blackboards. Another common mistake consists in calling for volunteers to answer questions after each activity. If you always call for volunteers, the students quickly learn that they don't have to think about what you ask them to do. They can just relax or talk about the football game because someone else will eventually supply the answer. On the other hand, if they know that any of them could be called on for a response in a minute or two, most or all of them will do their best in order to be ready. One of the most recurrent concerns of teachers is the idea that active learning might prevent them from finishing the program, since so much time is wasted in activities rather than in delivering information and explaining technical notions and concepts related to their subject. You can spend as much or as little time you want to. Just a few time of activity in each class period will make a substantial difference in the learning that occurs in the class with a minor impact on the syllabus. To avoid losing any syllabus content at all, Take the most of the material you now spend a lot of time on, long prose passages, diagrams or derivations, and put them in handouts sprinkled with questions or gaps. Have the students read through the material in class and either lecture on the gaps or, even better, use them as the basis for the activities. You'll cover more material than you ever did when you said every word or you did every calculation yourself, and the quality of learning will be much greater. You might have observed that some students don't like to be asked to work in class, especially when you first start doing this. Many students want their instructor to tell them everything they need to know for the exams, not one word more or less, and if they are asked to work in class, they resent it. The key thing is to let them know that you are doing active learning not for your own selfish purposes, but because there is research showing that students taught this way do better on exams. On the other hand, as some teachers during the pilots reported, active learning can be appreciated by students because by testing their understanding of the subjects by means of an exercise, they were better able to formulate their doubts and their answers. This is something missing during traditional lesson. Furthermore, during this experience, students have many opportunities to receive feedback. As one of the teachers during the pilots highlighted, feedback needs to be clear and understandable by students. At the end of his course, he sent each student an assessment form that not only included 
the numeric rating of their performance, but also a small statement either highlighting positive aspects or giving them advice for the future. The first time you do an active exercise in a class unaccustomed to active learning, many students might just stare straight ahead and you will have to personally encourage some of them to work with each other. By the second or the third time you do it, there should be few or if any holdouts. At that point, stop worrying about it. Active learning does not only require an extra effort to the teachers, but also to the students. From the pilots, we learned that one of the most important things in this kind of experiences is to engage students. This is why we suggest, first of all, to explain them why we are doing these activities. Even if they can see the value of them, they have to know that doing these activities is important for the development of their soft skills and that developing and training their soft skills is very important for their future and for their employability. It is important to dedicate time to explain to students the active learning activities that will be used in the course, teachers' expectations, intended learning outcomes, and the evaluation criteria students will be faced with. For example, during the pilot, some teachers shared with their students the evaluation grids that they would use for the assessment of active learning. Last but not least, we recommend to have a debriefing after each activity in order to help students learn from what they have experienced and have the possibility to transfer what they have learned, that is, the competencies they have acquired in another field or in another situation. Depending on the course design, giving students the opportunity to reflect through a video has shown to be perceived as an innovative tool and somewhat different from traditional tasks. This, however, leads to the necessity of guiding students through this process. We would therefore encourage teaching staff to regularly check back with students and the work they are producing. In case this proves impossible, as one of the teachers during the pilots highlighted, greater attention needs to be put on formulating the necessary instructions. The instructions are even more necessary when the activities are carried out online. The novel situation related to the COVID-19 pandemic has nevertheless revealed that active learning can be performed even in online settings without any modification of the intended learning outcomes. When the pandemic emergency will be finished, hopefully, we plan to build on this blended model, carrying out some activities online and adding the discussion among students in the classroom. This is our lesson learned.